Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again, and I'm doing another project for my company retreat, but this is another project that has multiple uses. We can use it to hand away free giveaways at our company retreat. You could use it if you're in college and over 21, or parents could use it to divvy out work for their kids or just have a lot of fun. Stick around, I'll show you how to build it. Grab a spare half inch piece of scrap that I know you have lying around. I found a piece of plywood that I'll be using. Next, grab a can of stain or wax or use a compass if you'd like and draw a circle. The size will depend on how large you want to build your Plinko game. Use a scroll saw, band saw, jig saw, hire some beavers, or even practice your karate to cut out the Plinko disc. I cut the disc out as the first step to make sure that I know just how large it ends up being to determine the correct spacing of the pegs and the landing chutes. I didn't want to build the board and put all that immense pressure on myself to have to cut the perfect size disc. I would have simply cracked under that pressure. So instead of building the disc for the board, I'm building the board for the disc. After the disc is cut, sand down the edges to smooth it out and help round out any areas that you didn't cut that well. Now you know the size of your disc and can continue with the board, creating the perfect spacing of the pegs and the chutes. The next step is cutting the back to size. I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood that I got from my local lumber yard. I really recommend using a lumber yard for buying your sheet goods. This birch plywood is so much better quality than the pine plywood you get at the big box store and only cost me $2 more. The size of my Plinko board is 37 and 3 quarter inches tall and 28 and 1 quarter inch wide to fit my 6 slots. The size of yours will be determined by how many slots you have and the size of your disc. Carefully mark out across the bottom of the board where each slot will be. Be sure that you leave enough room in each slot for the disc plus the thickness of the pegs and the width of the wood you'll use for the landing chutes as well as a little wiggle room for the disc to slide in between. For me, this was adding one half of an inch to the width of the disc. Once you have these marked, use a T-square or a straight edge and draw out the grid on your Plinko board. You want to make sure that these are pretty accurate. They don't have to be exact as it's just a game, but it does help if you get the grid nice and even at this point. Do the same thing going up the board now. Mark out evenly spaced marks and using your straight edge or T-square, complete the grid so that you will now have both vertical and horizontal grid lines on your Plinko board. You're not quite done marking and drawing the grid lines yet. Each row of pegs will be shifted to fall in the middle of the row above and below it. This is what gets the disc bouncing around. So we now need to make a mark in the middle of each slot across the bottom of the board. What's that good old saying? Measure twice, cut once. I mistakenly marked the middle at two and a half inches when it should have been two and one quarter inches. I will remark them all. I'm glad I caught it now. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Math is hard. Using my T-square once again, I fill in the lines for those now correctly marked halfway points. Notice that I don't need to mark the line from the top all the way through the bottom of the Plinko board. I stop at the bottom line. It really doesn't matter, but this just helps me not get confused on which are the full slot marks and which are the halfway marks. I get confused easily. It's now time to start marking where each peg will go. Start with the bottom row, marking the grid location of the bottom row. 
Then, moving up one row at a time, we will shift over to the halfway marks. We continue that until the entire board is marked. Pegs will not work on the halfway marks on the very sides of the board. The disc would simply get stuck between those pegs and the sides of the board. To fix this, I'll use small triangles that will push the disc back into play. I need eight triangles, so I'll get that by cutting four four-inch squares in half horizontally. I start by making the four-inch squares out of scrap half-inch plywood. Now I need to cut the squares in half horizontally, creating the triangles. For that, I use my table saw sled and my square, as I've done in previous videos. Not the most elegant, but it works just fine. Okay, I cut my first triangle and I thought, man, that looks a little bit big. So I went and measured it and guess what? It is big. So then I kind of started thinking, well, here's my squares that I cut. And I forgot about this one little thing called math. And these measurements, it's way too big. So I need to trim them much smaller. Okay, class. Here's the problem. I went ahead and I cut the square. I cut it in half crosswise to make my triangle. This is too big. The problem I have is from here to here needs to be two and one quarter inches. So that means from here to here, seeing as double the space, needs to be four and one half inches. So if we just draw that and we say that needs to be four and one half inches plus one eighth inch for the saw kerf equals four and five eighths of an inch is what that needs to be. Okay, great. So now how wide do I need to cut each side? Well, you all remember A squared plus B squared equals c squared. Well, that's cool because we already know c squared. So if we just plug these in, c squared, we know is gonna equal the square of four and five eighths, which is, let me calculate, and see, dun, 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 carry the one minus this plus that, oh yeah, 21.39, which is great. Well, we also know we're dealing with a square, so we know A and B are going to equal, which is great. So we also know A squared is going to equal B squared, which is wonderful, because since these equal, we know that we can just say 2A squared equals C squared, which is 2139. So now all we have to do is figure out what A is, and that gives us A equals dividing by two. That C, let's see, carry the one minus this. That gives us 10.695. That should be A squared, by the way. So now, what's the square of 10.695? Let's see, do the math real quick in my head. Bum, bum, bum. That gives us roughly 3.27, which is close enough to three and a quarter, which is what I'm going to make each side. Easy peasy, do it all in your head, no problem. Now that I have the correct size squares, I use my sled and square again and cut them all in half, making eight triangles. Here you can see how the triangles are going to be placed on the Plinko board. I pre-drill a hole in the location of each peg. Originally I was going to use either 1 quarter inch or 3 8 inch dowels for each peg, but I'm simply running out of time and instead I'm going to use drywall screws. Not exactly what I wanted, but it'll work just as good and will save me a ton of time. If I was going to use the dowels, these holes would be to the size of the dowel used. Now just sit back 
and listen to the soothing sounds of the power drill. I'm using half inch plywood for the sides and the bottom. I start by ripping three inch pieces on the table saw. Two for the sides and one for the bottom. I then trim them to length. The bottom should be the same width as the Plinko board and the two sides should be the same height of the board plus one half inch for the bottom piece. Now is the time to mark on the bottom piece where each slot is. Hold the bottom piece to the bottom of the Plinko board, making sure it's flush on each side, and mark where the sides of each slot are. The sides and bottom are going to go on just like this. There's one other piece though that I forgot to cut, and that's the piece that's going to go across the front here to keep the disc from falling out once it hits the bottom. I'm going to cut that at the same three inches because I, I want it to hang, even though it's going to hang over this half inch right here, I want it to be a little bit shorter just to make it a little bit easier to grab the disc out of there. So I'm going to cut that now. I'm going to use 3 8 inch plywood for the dividers in the bottom for the Plinko scoring slots. To make sure that the dados I use line up, I tape the bottom piece and the bottom front piece that I just cut together and mark where the dados will be cut. Using my table saw sled, I cut the dado. I do this by raising my blade about 1 8 of an inch and making two passes. I run the boards through on the first pass, then move the boards over about a sixteenth of an inch and run it through again. I sneak up on this until I get a good fit. I then repeat for all slots. It's okay if your dado is just a bit off. This is not structural and no one is going to notice if your dado was a little too large. Next I rip my 3 sixteenth inch plywood and using my table saw sled and a stop block, I cut five dividers. Always give a test fit before permanently assembling. Notice these dividers leave three quarters of an inch room for the Plinko board to fit against it. Gluing up the bottom is about as easy as it gets. Simply glue the bottom piece to the bottom front piece and make sure the dados line up. While still on the clamps, you can glue the dividers. Only glue is holding all this together. The entire bottom piece will later be glued and screwed to the Plinko board and the sides, which will add the strength that is needed. I'm going to paint before final assembly. I first tape off any areas that will need gluing and then slap on the paint. Black and orange are the standard colors in this household. Like I've said in previous videos, and I'm sure I'll repeat again in future videos, not only is black and orange the colors of my company I work at, they are also the colors of the college my oldest son goes to, as well as where my wife earned her masters. Don't forget to paint the pegs. Again, I simply ran out of time to use dowels as the pegs, so I'm using drywall screws. Gluing on the triangles is super easy as well. Since I'm running so close to the deadline, I'm gluing these on before the paint is 100% dry, so I'm using a piece of wax paper under the spring clamp so the clamps don't stick to the triangles. Simply glue and clamp all eight triangles on. Next step is attaching the bottom. You should have strips that you taped off before painting. Apply glue to those areas and clamp to the Plinko board. The clamps will temporarily hold the bottom to the board until you can pre-drill, countersink, and screw the bottom on. 
This will allow you to remove the clamps and move on to the sides while the glue is drying. Double check that the dividers on the bottom line up with the first set of pre-drilled peg holes. The sides go on just like the bottom. Apply glue to the unpainted strips and clamp to the side. The clamps will hold everything in place until pre-drilling, countersinking, and screwing in four or five screws along the side. Don't forget to add glue to attach the sides to the bottom as well to really secure things up. Once you have inserted the screws, you can remove the clamps and repeat the exact same thing on the other side. I attached the second side, same as the first off camera. At this point, the Plinko board is assembled and only needs the pegs to be inserted. I gave everything three coats of spray lacquer before inserting the pegs so that I would have all the pegs sticking out from the board the same distance and not sticking out from the back. I calculated that I needed one and a quarter inches of the screw to be out from the front. So I cut a piece of scrap wood to one and a quarter inches and used that as a guide in drilling in all the screws. When the screw head reached the top of the scrap wood, I knew it was in the correct amount and I moved to the next. Now simply screw in all the screws as straight as you can. Pre-drilling really help the screws go in straight. Once the screws are in, you are done. Okay, I'm out of time. I really wanted to build a stand or maybe something on the back that would fold out and keep it tilted. I'm just out of time. I've got other things to do and I need to leave for the retreat tomorrow. So I'm using this easel, this painting easel. It does stand up a little bit too tall than I would like, so occasionally it will fall out, but it's probably about one out of every 12 or 13 times it falls out. So let's go ahead and give this a test. Works great, works really good. What are these? Okay, so for the retreat, this is the way it's gonna work. We don't have an endless supply of free gifts that we give out, so we're going to clip six different envelopes. Could be a gift card, it could be a little note that says, hey, you get some piece of tech, whatever it is we're giving out. But because we don't have an endless supply, that's why I put the screws on the sides. Remember I did that? On the sides, on the bottom triangles, and right in front, of every divider. And the reason is, let's say I grab that one, so I take that out. Whatever prize that is, I get. I don't want someone coming back in there because we don't have any other prizes to fill. So I've got rubber bands that you'll just put around. Like so. So now it can't get in there. To simulate it, I'll just go ahead and drop it right here. You see, it'll block it. Now, let's say that you're in college and you're 21 and you want to put in each envelope and you'll just keep replacing it. Take two shots, pass a shot to the left, whatever you want to do down here. If you are a parent, you could put things in here that says clean the dishes, clean your room, sweep whatever, do whatever chore. Your kids put it in here, that's what they get to do. Anyways, if you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe, like, and share. I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.